This is the end, my only friend, the end. Hello, Wonder Hussy here, way down south at the U.S.-Mexican border. That's right, this is the border fence or the wall stretching out behind me there. You can see for scale, there's my rig. It's a mighty wall. Unfortunately, I don't think it's doing what it's supposed to. Anyway, that's not the reason why I'm down here. I'm down here because I wanted to see for myself with my own two eyes the very end of the mighty Colorado River. That's right, the mighty Colorado River that flows over 1,400 miles from the Rocky Mountains, where it first seeps out of the ground around 10,000 feet above sea level. And if you watched my video where I hiked to the headwaters of the Colorado River, way up in Colorado near the Wyoming border, you might remember that I skinny dipped in the headwaters and I even filtered some of the water to make a bourbon and Colorado River water cocktail to toast the long life of this well, once mighty river. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's a filter strong enough in this world that I would trust to make a cocktail with this end of the river. And besides, I can't even get to the end of the river because the dang wall is in the way. Uh, apparently it kind of meanders through the desert on the other side of this fence. Uh, well, let me see if I can peek through the fence and give you an idea of what I'm talking about before I get chased away by border patrol, which frankly, I'm surprised I haven't already been because I've seen a few of them down here. They're all posted up at the side of this. This is a canal that's irrigating all these farm fields here uh, on the US side of the border down by Yuma, Arizona. That is not the Colorado River. The river is over there somewhere between these bars. You might be able to see there's like sand dunes and very dry desert. Oh, here's the border patrol. Oh, far out. That guy was actually super cool. Uh, I told him what I was doing and he didn't say I had to leave. So I'm just going to go back and show you what I was trying to show you between the bars of this dang wall, which by the way, you know, when's the last time you got to see the infamous border wall up close and personal like this. Pretty sexy, huh? Yep, there he goes, trusting me to do my thing on YouTube and not try to sneak into Mexico. <laughs> it is kind of weird, like he barely asked me any questions. I mean, if I was him, I wouldn't have believed me. What, you're obsessed with the Colorado River and you're making a video for your YouTube channel about the end of it? Anyway, back to this sexy border wall. We're just gonna slip our camera right between the bars. Oh no, look at that. Now we're in Mexico, <laughs> or I guess you guys are in Mexico. I'm still here in the good old U.S. of A. Anyway, what I was trying to say is the end of the Colorado River is somewhere out there in that, well, if you look in the distance, and I'm going to have to zoom in because I couldn't get there on foot or by vehicle, you can see it's like, it's desert, man. It's just sand dunes, scrub, like it's pretty arid. But I guess the river does sort of wind through even that dusty, arid sand field and uh, well from if what i can believe from what i saw on google maps it looks like it just kind of peters out in the middle of that sandy area i mean if you look at the satellite view on google maps which i did and i pinned where i thought i would be able to drive to it just kind of like sinks the the river just sort of like peters out sinks into the sand Ugh, let me get this camera back over in the u.s Ugh. Welcome back, y'all. Anyway, uh, this didn't used to be the end of the Colorado River, okay? Historically, before man in his infinite wisdom diverted its waters to feed his golf courses and strawberry patches, the Colorado River used to run all the way from the headwaters in the Rocky Mountains to the Gulf of California by Baja, California in Mexico, okay? The Sea of Cortez. That's where the river used to come out. You know, why am I peeking through this fence? That guy left me alone to my own devices. I guess I can just... Well, there's like this weird little footpath over here that I, looks like I can just go right down around the fence or wall, whatever you want to call it. I mean, look at this. <laughs> okay, there's the wall. That's Merca. That's Mexico. Okay, actually, I'm being facetious. I don't think Mexico starts right here. I think there's some kind of like buffer, no man's land type thing. 
but you can see that the area is strewn with trash somebody did make an effort to bag some of it up and apparently we can't really go any farther because we are entering the Kokopa indian reservation and it says no trespassing and it says no dumping, which apparently whoever dumped all this crap here didn't get the memo. It's ironic too how there's all these half empty water bottles just discarded in the desert. You know, since we are in the middle of a water crisis involving a river that's dying right out there. Anyway, what I was trying to say was the once mighty Colorado that at one time flowed freely into the Gulf of California now peters out somewhere in this field over here, which we can see a little bit better from this side of the fence. Uh, man, I sure would like to walk out into this desert and find the very end of the river for myself, but I don't wanna get uh, arrested by Border Patrol or the BIA, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Like those Native American police officers are supposedly pretty hardcore. So I'm not gonna trespass. I'm just gonna stand here and wish I was a little bit closer to the sad end of the mighty Colorado. Golly, listen to how peaceful it is down here. It's so quiet. You can sort of hear traffic in the background. You can hear a little bit of wind rustling in the cottonwoods. There's a dove cooing. Very peaceful for a part of the country that's seen so much strife, especially in recent years. Anyway, back to the Colorado River. Like I was saying, uh, by the time it gets down here to the Mexican border, this river has made it over 1,400 miles through seven states, through mountains and deserts and forests, through 15 dams, two giant man-made fake lakes, and under one painstakingly deconstructed and reassembled historic English bridge. That's right, by the 1960s, the famous London Bridge in London, England could no longer support the amount of traffic crossing it, so it was sold to a real estate developer who had it disassembled, shipped, and trucked out to the Arizona desert, where he put it back together at Lake Havasu. And yet, despite all these indignities, the Colorado River still runs proud even down into Arizona, and you might think its spirit could never be broken. I mean, by the time it gets down here, remember, it's already passed through 15 dams without being successfully neutered. But when it gets down this far south, well, it kind of meets the final boss, and that boss is a real ball breaker. Matter of fact, let's get in the car right now and I'll go show you what I'm talking about. As much as I hate to leave this weirdly peaceful no man's land here on the border. I mean, when's the last time you had this opportunity? Just hang out, they even put up shade. Ooh, there's even porta potties over there. Hm. I do need to take a tinkle. So I suppose uh, rather than just pop a squat. Oh gosh, look, a toothbrush still in the wrapper. I wonder if that fell out of the pocket of some illegal migrant trying to sneak into Yuma. Anyway, uh, rather than pop a squat like I normally do and take a piss near the end of the Colorado River, I'll be a lady and I'll use one of these porta potties so kindly provided by the federal government. Let's see how good a job the government does at keeping them turlets clean. Oh, this one's free. Oh, tidy. Nary a solitary turd in there yet. And plenty of toilet paper. Ah, much better. Okay, let's get back in the car and I'll show you this final ball breaking boss. Okay, as if the other 14 dams the Colorado River goes through on its journey south from the Rocky Mountains weren't enough, this 15th dam is the final boss. This is the Imperial Dam. This is the final dam on the Colorado River. Unfortunately, the government doesn't let you get too close to it, but there is a really nice retirement RV park down here for snowbirds with a golf course and everything. I guess this is called Martinez Lake, and that's the final man-made fake lake on the Colorado River before it peters out in the desert down there by the border where we just were. Man, it's really frustrating that I can't get any closer thanks to the government. Look at that. I mean, I guess they're really worried about people coming down here and like trying to blow this dam up, which I guess is a valid concern when you consider how many people's lives depend on water from this river and 
oh gosh, if some terrorist came out and blew this dam up, well, that wouldn't be good at all. Let me see. Maybe I can get up here. I don't want to like hang out here too long because the guy at the guard gate, you know, I said this was a, uh, like a snowbird retirement community. Well, the guy at the guard gate let me come in to check out the dam, but he said I could only stay for 15 minutes. So I better make this quick. Okay, here's the other side of the dam. You can see the Colorado River water is coming through thick and foamy and a beautiful sort of turquoise green color. And to look at this, you'd think there was no problem at all with the uh, water ecosystem in these parts. I mean, this looks like a very healthy river. However, you may notice that this is concreted in. I've never seen a natural river with concrete river banks like this. And that's because once the Colorado River passes through the Imperial Dam, 90% of it is diverted into irrigation canals. Okay, this part of the canal isn't concreted in, and I'll get to that in a minute, but basically, I guess when they drew up the Colorado River Treaty back in the 1920s, you know, when they allocated what percentage of the river water each of the states in the watershed would get, you know, Utah gets a percentage, Arizona gets a percentage, well, Mexico gets 10%. So these irrigation canals are the United States and more precisely California's way of sucking up every last drop of their 90% of the river water. And there's actually two canals. One canal runs eastward over to Yuma to irrigate the fields over there, but the vast majority of it, of that 90% of what's left of the Colorado River after all them other states got their share, all of that goes into this awesomely named All-American Canal. That's right, the All-American Canal. This, which by the way, is the biggest irrigation canal in the entire world, runs for 81 miles west, all the way to the Imperial Valley, so that we can have strawberries in the wintertime. You know, the Imperial Valley, the blistering, baking desert around the stinking Salton Sea in far southeastern California, one of the hottest, driest regions on Earth that now, thanks to man's ingenuity, produces over $2 billion worth of fruits and vegetables every year? Yep, that Imperial Valley is where all this water flows because, god dang it, it's my God-given right as an American to have strawberries whenever the f I want them. Anyway, this canal flows 80 miles west to irrigate the farmlands surrounding the Salton Sea. So you might say that's where the Colorado River really goes to die, since that's what the Salton Sea is made up of. Irrigation runoff. That's why it's so stinking and toxic. The Salton Sea was basically created by accident back in 1905 when the Colorado River, swollen by rains, breached an irrigation canal and poured into and filled the Salton Sink. But once that was fixed and the river was re-diverted, the only thing feeding the Salton Sea has been runoff from all the farmland surrounding it. And because there's so much salt and nitrates in it from the fertilizer, the sea is super salty and can't support too many life forms. And this canal is the only water source for the entire Imperial Valley. That's right, 100% of the water that the Imperial Valley uses to grow all them strawberries comes from this canal, which I guess is mostly why there's all this litigation going on right now. You know, now that we're in the middle of this mega drought and Lake Mead's going dry, Lake Powell's going dry, all the states are having to cut back and, you know, Nevada cut back its usage, Utah cut back its usage. Well, now it's coming down to Arizona and California. And I guess Arizona claims that they have more people that are dependent on the water than California does. But California, I guess indirectly, more people are dependent on the water because well, there's a lot of people like me who want their dang strawberries. And then I thought this sign here was pretty interesting. No trespassing, dangerous water. And then they also have it in Spanish for the benefit of all the, I guess, illegal migrants. No traspasar aguas peligrosas. And then it says all American Canal Imperial Irrigation District. Well, the reason they have that up is Apparently, something like 500 people have drowned in this canal since they constructed it because we are, you know, you saw I was right at the border, friends, earlier in this video. We're right by the border. So a lot of illegal migrants do try to cross this 
canal and apparently i mean you can't really tell from up here but apparently it's really deep really cold and has a relatively fast current i think i read online that the current is something like five miles per hour which i guess is a pretty fast current or hard to struggle against especially when you're in really deep cold water and the banks are really steep on either side so it's hard to climb out so yeah something like 500 people have drowned in this canal and that's why they have to have those warning signs up but i'm thinking golly if i've already done everything that you have to do to get this far into your illegal border crossing journey Mm, I don't feel like a few signs would get in my way. Anyway, one other interesting thing about this canal, and it goes back to what I was saying about it not being concreted in here. Well, I guess it was concreted in back at the dam because they go through this very complicated process of desilting the water. They somehow suck out all the silt and pump it back into the riverbed farther upstream so that just the fresh, pure, clean water flows through this canal and goes on down to irrigate the farm fields in the Imperial Valley. Well, apparently they were losing a lot of water to seepage every year because it's not concreted in. Um, so water would just naturally seep into the ground. Uh, and well, you know, times are tough right now. Water's tight. Whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. All these water wars going on. Everyone's trying to figure out how they can squeeze more drops out of this poor, beleaguered, over-litigated river. Uh, they decided that they would concrete in a portion of it. I feel like a 30-mile portion, and I don't know if they did this yet or not. This was back in 2009. They were going to concrete it in to prevent that seepage. So apparently, okay, we're, they're going to concrete in this one section. Well, that was a big controversy because the water had been seeping into the ground for so long that I guess it kind of returns down into the water table and all the people living in Mexico, right on the other side of the border, they're in Mexicali. And then even on this side of the border in Calexico, that's right, there's a town on the California side called Calexico. And then there's a town on the Mexican side called Mexicali. Anyway, the people in those two communities had gotten used to this seepage, replenishing their little aquifers, and so they'd been doing their own agriculture based off it. So now all of a sudden, the federal government comes along and goes, mm -mm, we're putting a stop to that seepage and concrete it in. We are basically choking off these other two economies. All this fussing and feuding over this peaceful, lazy looking river. Anyway, I don't know what the outcome of all those lawsuits was, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that Big Strawberry went ahead and concreted in this canal. Maybe not this part of it, but God, probably a mile ahead, probably the whole rest of it is concreted in, so not a single drop gets sucked up by those greedy saps in Calexico. <laughs> anyway, it's just another example of how insanely litigated every drop of water in this river is. So, yep, that's how this once mighty river ends up sort of petering out here in this lonely patch of desert. I mean, technically when it peters out, I guess the water just sort of seeps down into the ground and does eventually sort of trickle underground toward the Gulf of California. And a matter of fact, if you look at a satellite image, it does still look pretty marshy around what used to be the Delta, but the river don't flow there anymore. That sounds like a country song. The river don't flow there anymore. <laughs> okay, enough of me. Uh, I'd like to toast this river, despite the fact that I can't even get to the real end of it, with some pure, clean drinking water, which I'm sure originally came from this very river. In fact, well, I'm toasting its demise, so I guess it would be appropriate to pour some out for my fallen homie. R.I.P. Mighty Colorado. R.I.P. Cheers.